everyone, I'm Monica and I'm an internal medicine attending. If you're new here, welcome to my channel where I have videos on how to succeed in medical school. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'd like to do some more content on how to find various career paths within internal medicine. So in this video, I'm going to be interviewing Dr. William Cope, who is a direct care hospitalist at Ronald Reagan Medical Center, which is a quaternary hospital, and he's also my husband. All right, so first question, let's start with the basics. What is a hospitalist? Yeah, well, it's, it's honestly pretty simple. A hospitalist simply takes care of general medicine hospitalized patients. So when you come in the hospital, you have a hospitalist while you're there, and then you're discharged, and you follow up again with your primary care doctor. All right, so I mentioned that you are a direct care hospitalist. Like, what does that term mean? What's a direct care hospitalist versus a teaching hospitalist? Yeah, I think that's a good question because we, you know, as medical students don't necessarily have any exposure to direct care um, by the nature of the job. Really direct care, a direct care hospitalist, um, it's kind of like the name, you directly take care of patients, meaning that there's no intern, there's no resident, there's no learner on the team. Um, so, you know, when I'm taking care of patients, I'm the one putting the orders in, I'm the one calling the consults, I'm the one seeing the patients. So describe to us what your daily routine is. Basically, uh, I get up around six in the morning, um, you know, have my little routine here at home where I eat some food and make my way over to the hospital. I'm there at seven every day. Um, and for the first hour or two, I review um, all of my patients, uh, ranging anywhere from as few as only you know eight patients to as high as you know uh, 13 or at, at uh, other sites, maybe as high as 15. Patients, I review them in the electronic medical record system, and um, and then I go and see them. Um, and you know, during this time, I'm I'm also you know being proactive, calling consults, putting orders in, and things like that. But and really thinking about my plan for the day and trying to enact my plan. Um, but then I go around and I see all the patients. Then after I've seen everybody, the rest of the day is really finishing up work calling consults, writing notes, things like that, getting my sign out ready for um, the, the night doctor to take over the patients. All right, so why did you personally decide to become hospitalist? What do you like about the job? Yeah, you know, I, I, I really like the acuity of working in the hospital. Um, in fact, I was considering um, uh, pulmonary critical uh, care medicine um, during my residency. Um, but I ultimately realized that I didn't want that much acuity. Um, I wanted some, but not so much that my day could be completely thrown off by one particular very, very ill patient. Um, the, the other thing is that, you know, with critical care, you're literally the last step. So if anything goes absolutely wrong, you're, it's, it's, you're the one who has to ultimately manage it in the end. As a hospitalist, when things get a little, a little too um, intense and the patient is a little too sick, um, you know, I, I'm able to send those patients to the ICU, um, and I think that's an to important To the terrified thing. Mickey resident. To the terrified <laughs> Mickey resident, that's right. Um, so I think that's a nice, a nice part. Having acuity, but there being one more step of acuity above me. I, I, I like having the control of being in the inpatient setting. Um, you know, I can order labs, um, I can order imaging studies, you know, at, at any time. If I, if I forget during the morning to, you know, to a particular part of a workup, but I remember it later in the day, I can still order it and get it done. You know, uh, as an outpatient doc, it's a little terrifying because you have to think of it all then and there um, to, to tell your patient what you're going to be doing. And if they leave, they've already gone. You can't get the blood test. Um, so having that control, being able to watch things day to day very closely is something I really like. And then the other thing is I really like being off when I'm off. When I leave the hospital, and especially when I... when I Huge plus. Well, yeah, when I go off of service, I'm literally done. I don't, I, I get very rarely calls from patients and whatnot. Okay, so now let's get into the juicy stuff. What are the big <laughs> cons of being a hospitalist? Yeah, I mean, I think the cons are, you know, we've touched on some of the points already, but it, is, it, it can be a very intense job while you're on. You know, it can be a little unpredictable as to how long you're going to be in the hospital. If you have a particularly ill set of patients, um, you could be stuck there a lot longer than you were expecting. No after work plans. <laughs> yeah, having after work plans can be very difficult. You know, the nights, that's definitely something that is, is a major con for a lot of people. Yeah, what about the discharge planning? 
That's yeah. probably my least favorite part <laughs> of the hospital. Yeah, I'm actually amazed we made it this far without <laughs> talking about Dispo uh, yet. This is a, a hugely important uh, topic to bring up. Um, a very large part of what I do um, is discharge planning. Basically, um, often the actual medical treatment for a particular pathology can be fairly straightforward um, and doesn't actually take that much time. If I have someone with pneumonia, I know they need to be on antibiotics. I choose their antibiotics, give them fluids. If they have sepsis, it's pretty quick. Um, but what can, can really take a lot of my day up is once they're, they're doing better and ready to leave the hospital, is getting them ready to leave, making sure they can walk, making sure they have the necessary support at home. Do they need home oxygen? Um, all of these things are, are, are somewhat more difficult to set up and do than one might expect uh, and can really suck up a lot of time during your day. So there are rumors out there that hospitalists are very prone to burnout, right? Because it's that constant grind. Is that actually true? Do you feel like hospitalists get burned out faster and do you feel like it's not really a viable long-term career? No, I, I don't really think that's true. That, that would be my short answer. <laughs> the longer answer is a little more nuanced um, in that, you know, um, it, it is true that any starting hospitalist position at a, at a large academic center will usually be quite intense um, and you will work quite hard. Um, but there is a there is a pathway to getting to a job that is a little more sustainable. Um, and, and again, this is talking about academic centers. Many people will do, you know, community hospital, hospitalists. They'll be working at a community site without residents, without interns, things like this. Um, and many of these gigs ultimately will have slightly better schedules. They'll probably be reimbursed a little bit better um, and maybe a little more sustainable in, in, in the long run. You know, again, my knowledge is about academic centers and, and within an academic center, I, I really do think that you can avoid burnout um, by, by, by adapting and changing. So basically, as your career progresses, trying to find that thing that, that, really, um, that really moves you, really makes you excited, um, and hopefully that thing is, is something that maybe takes a little bit less you know, direct clinical time. So how much do hospitalists <laughs> actually make? And I know you'll probably only know this for Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, it, Again, like any job, it's gonna vary widely over throughout the country. Um, but specifically in Los Angeles, I do know, um, you know, sort of the bottom end of the range will be, you know, around two hundred thousand, um, and then um, the upper end will be closer to three hundred. Um, but again, it really depends. Well, I would say that one of, the, but what I would say is ultimately. The more you work, the more you're going to get paid. So there are going to be some jobs where you may be closer to that 200 range, but it may be a pretty nice job. Um, and then there may be ones that are more at the 300 range, um, but you're probably going to work fairly hard to, to get that. Um, and then ultimately there is, you know, we've been talking about community versus academic. Um, the reimbursement at community sites is often higher than in academic sites. Um, and you know, across the country, I know it can range a lot, but people can make well upwards of three hundred thousand as a hospitalist. Yeah, so I feel like you can make a lot in LA, but the cost of living is also high in LA. Yeah. I know on the East Coast, some really big, prestigious academic centers will only pay like what hundred something thousand a year. There are some uh, very large and again prestigious academic centers that um, ultimately don't have to pay their people. Uh, very much uh, to get them to stay because they are very uh, prestigious places. So maybe 170, 180. Um, again, in places with lower cost of living. Um, so I, I would say, you know, it's really hard to put an exact number on these things because it is going to vary from place to place. Um, but what I will say is that academic and community hospitalists are overall well reimbursed. All right, so last question. What advice do you have for a medical student or a resident who's trying to become a hospitalist? Uh, well, you know, it's fairly straightforward, honestly. As, as a medical student, really what you want to do is try to match to a center um, that has a strong hospitalist program. Um, and that doesn't necessarily correlate with the overall reputation of, of the entire complex. And then another thing I would say is that when you're choosing your residency, 
um, think about where you ultimately want to land because I will say it yeah. is much easier to get a job at the institution you trained at, the, that, you, that you did residency at. Very true. Um, it's in fact usually somewhat easy getting a job. They know you, um, they, they know how great you are, um, and so offering you a job is not a big stretch. Um, so if you have the choice between a couple different residencies, um, and but one in particular is from a, is, is in a location that you really actually want to maybe spend the next big chunk of your life, the next five, ten years. That's probably a good place to go to residency. All right, guys. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Dr. Cope, no, for <laughs> being here for our interview today. So, guys, if you like this kind of content where you want to learn more about careers. Please let me know in the comments because I obviously have friends in various subspecialties and I can probably get them to come teach us about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want to see more content on how to succeed in medicine. Bye guys!